We recently reported on the murder of Jamil Shaw, a 17-year-old star football player from Los Angeles. Jamil's accused killer is an illegal alien who was protected from deportation by Special Order 40, the law that makes Los Angeles a sanctuary city. But as Jamil's story illustrates, protecting illegal aliens by giving them sanctuary from the law comes with dire consequences. A recent story reveals how it all starts. The tiny town of Guadalupe, Arizona, announced that it doesn't want Sheriff Joe Arpaio to police their streets. Why? Sheriff Joe just wants to enforce the law. But according to Guadalupe's mayor, the town, quote, wants a police department that is respectful of all human beings, regardless of citizenship. What they're really asking for, of course, is a special break for illegals, and that's sanctuary. Number one on the sanctuary checklist, diminished law enforcement. Here's another sad example. Estimates say that 70% of the population of Maywood, California, is in the country illegally. Residents were being charged left and right with driving without a license and insurance. Maywood's response? Do away with the police department's traffic division. Number two on the sanctuary checklist, increased corruption. Again, Maywood leads the way. At least a third of their 37-man force have left previous police jobs under a cloud of suspicion, including the police chief, and many have either had brushes with the law or ended up leaving the Maywood Police Department after being convicted of crimes themselves. Number three on the sanctuary checklist, increased crime. Going back to Guadalupe, it's reported that, quote, crime is a big problem and one that residents want solved. But without allowing the police to deal with the actual problem, illegal aliens, it can't be solved, only papered over with PC platitudes until you have a situation like we did last year here in Chicago. 13-year-old Shanna Gayden was gunned down in a gang shooting gone wrong. The hit that killed Shanna was ordered by Mwenda Marithi, an illegal from Kenya, who had previously been arrested 28 times. He was still here because the Chicago Police Department is not allowed to ask about a suspect's immigration status. Can you say sanctuary? With the general breakdown of the law comes number four on the sanctuary checklist. Cops being killed by illegal aliens. In Phoenix, Houston, Dallas, and Denver, to name a few, brave police officers have been murdered by illegal aliens who simply should not have been here. To add insult to injury, In almost every case, the political powers that be sided with the murderous invaders instead of those sworn to serve and protect we the people. Here's the bottom line. When you allow people from nations that have no respect for the rule of law to swarm into your country, don't act surprised when you see respect for the rule of law vanishing before your very eyes. As Robert Grace, Los Angeles prosecutor, put it, As a civilized society, we can't allow what's happening in Latin America to take over here. Venezuela and Mexico are awash in appalling violence because they don't respect the law. How many checks can you make on your city's sanctuary checklist? And more importantly, what are you going to do about it? The Victims a three-year-old and a six-year-old girl from North Hollywood. The accused, Pedro Ortiz, also known as Sedot Lopez, also known as Andres Lopez. The charges, lewd acts on a child under 14. The story. On May 5th, scumbag Ortiz, Lopez, whatever, sexually assaulted the six-year-old after offering to help her with her broken bicycle. The three-year-old wondered what was taking so long and followed only to be abused herself at the hands of this lowlife. We know that this crime was 100% preventable simply by virtue of Ortiz being in the country illegally. But were there any other opportunities for this molestation of two young girls to be prevented? Why, yes. Yes, there were. Ortiz had prior felony convictions, with an S, and had been previously deported, yet somehow, magically, amazingly, managed to sneak back across our fortress-like southern border to rape two innocent children. Of course, if our government had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, Ortiz wouldn't have been here to destroy the innocence of a three-year-old and a six-year-old little girl.
And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. The victims, Gary Weiss, Stephen Huff, and Amy Bartelme of Indiana. The accused, Mario Cadena, 30, an illegal alien from Mexico. The story. It is believed that Cadena was speeding and had been drinking last month when he ignored a stop sign and plowed into two other vehicles. One carried Indiana attorney Gary Weiss. In the second were couple Stephen Huff and Amy Bartelme. All four, including Cadena, died of blunt force injuries from the crash. So how were the deaths of Weiss, Huff, and Bartelme 100% preventable and then some? Let me count the ways. 2001. Charged with driving without a license and DWI, Cadena was given a suspended sentence and paid $480. 2003. Charged with unsafe lane movement and DWI, he received another suspended sentence. 2006. Charged with speeding, driving an unregistered vehicle, and driving without a license, Cadena paid $330. 2008. Ticketed for driving with a suspended license, he was scheduled to appear in court on this charge at the end of this month. Friends say Cadena had been struggling with alcoholism and was a hard worker, but the fact remains that he should have been struggling with alcoholism and working hard in Mexico. Of course, if our government, at any level and at any point in time, had been doing its job, getting and keeping illegal aliens out of our country, Gary, Stephen, and Amy would still be here to fight their own personal battles and work hard. And that makes this crime what? 100% preventable. Last week, Jake had the opportunity to interview senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and NRO writer, Andrew McCarthy. Andy's new book, Willful Blindness, details the history of Islamic terrorism on American soil and how we continue to be at risk as a nation by our willful blindness to that history. Jake's first question for Andy was to describe the nexus between terrorism and illegal immigration. Hi, how are you? Hey, Andy. Thanks for talking to me tonight. What I wanted to ask you about, Andy, was the nexus between illegal immigration and terrorism. Jake, it's a serious problem. The FBI uh, gave testimony in early 19... I'm sorry, early 2006 <clears throat> about breaking up a Hezbollah ring down in uh, on the Mexican border. Um, we know that people are being smuggled across the border, and the bigger problem is visa overstays, which account for about 40% of the illegal population in the country, and explain many of the 9-11 hijackers. So we're doing a better job tracking people as they come into the country, but we don't track who leaves, so we still don't have a good idea of who's in our country and who's not. So what do we need, what do we need to do differently? What, what needs to change? We certainly need to know who's here, um, but we also need to enforce the law, and I think that could start with, uh, you don't necessarily have to sweep up every illegal immigrant, but certainly people who violate our criminal laws uh, should go. We also need to step up enforcement on employers, because that's the magnet that brings people here. And then I think the problem will attrit. And once you got it down from, say, 20 million down to, you know, one or two million, if you could do that, uh, then you could start talking about, you know, what to do about the rest of the problem. For average people out there, what would you recommend that they do if they're concerned about illegal immigration? What steps can they get? What can they do? Well, I think they need to make themselves heard politically and, you know, make sure that their elected representatives understand that this is a matter of national security and a matter of importance. Very cool. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Willful Blindness is available in bookstores and, of course, at Amazon.com. Pick up a copy. Thanks for clicking in to this week's episode of the Blogs for Borders video blog burst. This week's show is once again sponsored by our good friend and Old Broad's Ramblings. Be sure to click over for some ramblings with attitude and unabashedly pro-life pro-gun, right-wing Christian, pro-military, and pro-American. And while you're clicking, don't forget the Support Blogs for Borders button at freedomfolks.com. 
A heads up, next week's show will be posted one day late. We'll be covering an appearance by Minuteman co-founder Chris Simcox at DePaul University. It promises to be lively, and we plan to have the video to prove it. Until next week, be vocal, be vigilant, and be unrelenting. We've got a country to save.